A couple of days ago, I got to ask the members of Dreamers and Go a couple of questions on uh, how they got together and how they got to know each other. Um, keep on watching, it will be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, first question, how did Dreamers and Go start? I am to blame, uh, but in 2015, I guess, or 16, I, had a, I, I met a producer and he asked me, have you written any songs? And uh, I, I <clears throat> mentioned a, a, a romantic ballad and uh, he said, oh, that's nice. And I had a few other songs and he said, only one is, is good enough. And that's the, a song called Empty Phrases. And that's a song we have written together 20 years, 30 years ago, maybe 40, 40. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so then I called you and I said, would you be so kind to sing it again, but now in the recording studio? <laughs> and that's how it started. Uh, at the moment you can hear a different kind of song. And you know that in the 80s, it would have been a hit. <laughs> 30 years, 40 years too late, yeah. And how did you guys get to know each other? And one of my colleagues was playing in a band. And, you know, you like singing. Yeah, I like singing. Well, we have a problem. I, I play in a, in a band and the singer is going to Japan. Would you like to replace him? Well, okay, you, we invite you for an audition. <laughs> and that's where I met Adrian. I think the first question he asked was, what kind of music do you like? And I said, well, and who are your favorites? And I said, well, I like blues a lot. The real blues, John Lee Hooker, uh, well, you can, a list of names. And we had a band at that time, QB and the Blizzards, which I did, admired a lot. And that's how we connected because, oh, you know, Hobo Blues, uh, I, and he started <laughs> playing, I started singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and we cute. almost had a hit. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, The start of the hobo I'm taking a freight train to be my friend. Well, we went straight back to the origin. That was this song of Johnny Hooker. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that's where it all started. And, and, and I think we had this band for a few years and then we had another band. Yeah. Uh, that, that stopped. At a certain moment, I don't know exactly how. Uh, you know, that's, I, I'm to blame for that because all the band members were studying. Yeah. They were all students at the University of Utrecht. I was working at the University of Utrecht, but I had a job. And well, we were fairly popular at a certain level. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of work. So. Uh, I, uh, yeah, you stopped and then uh, and I, I also stopped with that band and we, we stayed friends, so yeah. we had regular contact, but we didn't make any music anymore together. Yeah. And then he started his project with, well, picking up the old songs from, from the, the rock period. Until now, I think uh, Dreamers Co. have about 40, maybe 50 songs yeah. uh, recorded. If, if I look at, at Spotify, then you can see where people are listening. And they're listening uh, more or less all over the globe, from, from the Russian Federation uh, to Brazil, and, and from Canada to um, uh, France, Spain, Scandinavia also. The average listener for, for our songs are people who are brought up with rock music. I mean, uh, guys mostly. Uh, 40 plus, 50 plus, mm -hmm. and uh, I see a lot of motorbikes, a lot of dogs <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> Many songs are based on the true story. So Motorbikes, yeah, yeah. for example, is based on the true story of the old boy that uh, uh, was a neighbor, uh, a boy next to our house, and uh, he died in a, in, in a motor accident. Um, a long time ago, and, and the true story behind it uh, was told by his brother to me a few years ago, and then I wrote Motorcycle Blues. So all the inspiration basically comes from uh, true stories? Very, very often. 
Also, Snake Valley is, is a, a true story. Yes. Many other songs are... Love songs. Love songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And, and empty phrases, maybe it's good to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's also based on reality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. empty yeah. phrases was... I was inspired... Well, inspired... It was the, the, the punk period. So you, you could express your... That's what I did in that song. So I started the lyrics. Again, you had a beautiful lick on the guitar and it, it, it perfectly fit in, yeah. in, uh, yeah. in, in uh, the, the lyrics and the music were blended. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you wrote the lyrics in, in a few minutes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are several nice love songs as well. Yeah. One ballad uh, was particularly popular on... Um, started with um, Today I crossed, crossed the, street the street where you used to live. It was true. I, I crossed the street <laughs> where my love uh, used to live a long time ago. And uh, so all those memories came back and uh, that's how the song was written. <laughs> So I understood you began with blues. Is that still your favorite genre or is rock still in the picture as well? Well, it, it's, it's very strange as a singer uh, to, uh, to mimic that you're down the drain. Uh, I mean, I'm a I have a happy life and, that, and singing yeah. uh, about misery is, is conflicting. Yeah. So, for me, it's it, nowadays it's it's more fun. I mean, yeah, performing is fun. Uh, making music is fun. Uh, so I'm not not so serious anymore about the blues and stuff like that. And if I would be able to to write a fantastic love song, I would do it. But I'm blues. Maybe the feeling that I I, I had when I started blues playing a long time ago. Uh, was that it, it really went deep down in, in my emotions, and that's what I try to keep um, in my um, in my uh, songs. Uh, and I'm always looking for that emotion um, behind the song. In that way, I'm still a bluesman. For me, the the, the real blues is is uh, emotion and and real emotion. Yeah. I mean, I remember we had a gig in Alton, which is a long way back, but there was a, a girl in the audience on a wheel, in a wheelchair. And I saw that, and she was sitting like this, and I, 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 f I felt guilty. But at that moment, you feel the, the shiver down your spine, yeah. and, and then you have the feeling, this is what I want to do, I sing it for her. I recognized this sort of emotions he had when he was singing. Yeah, yeah. Because you had that for a long time. Yeah, yeah in, that's, in that's the true. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's for me performing. Our last gig, for instance, yeah. that was fantastic. So your last gig was more about enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's maybe one of the reasons I, I wrote the song. Reciprocal blues. And that means, I mean, a blues is always down. It's yeah. misery. And reciprocal is the inverse. So in fact, it's a happy game, with, yeah, yeah. which is a contradiction. Uh, it's, it's a blues which started with oh, the sun shining. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, still the 180 degrees against the real blues. And I could never dream of recording uh, 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 a song on vinyl or even CD. And now it's on Spotify and on YouTube, etc. One of our al albums was the album of the week at uh, Radio Grollo, which is the famous Johan Derksen. I'm basically satisfied if, if a few people who really like our music uh, can find it on YouTube, internet, uh, on, uh, on the internet in, in general. Uh, all the platforms have it. But um, I read on the website of Dreamers and Co that you are actually a collective. Yeah, that's right. Uh, could you explain that term? Uh, when when we started, we, we worked with a with a producer who uh, is also a multi a multi instrumentalist. With the three of us, we had a tremendous sound. 
And then I thought, okay, let's keep it simple like this. And if you need more, we ask other musicians to cooperate with us. Uh, to join in for a while. Yeah, I wanted to be my own boss. Uh, my uh, boss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we ask people gradually to, to work with us. The, the main focus was more recording songs yeah. than performing. Because when you want to perform, you need other people. Yeah. And we did a lot of gigs, but yeah. it was also al always a, a matter of organizing, inviting people, can you yeah. and that, that uh, okay. And Tom, you mentioned uh, all the gigs. What was actually your favorite gig? The last one. Yeah. I think that was the best. And, and also, the, um, every, everything was perfect. It was sold out. Uh, the atmosphere was great. There were a lot of friends. Um, and, and we were in, in good shape as well yeah. as musicians. After a gig, uh, another gig, someone came to me and said, okay, I want to be your manager. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I, can, I, I can get you many gigs, but that wasn't our goal. Yeah. Yeah. Our ambition was to, to have some gigs now and then. So it, was a, it remains a uh, very exceptional experience then. <laughs> Okay, are there any plans for the future for Dreamers and Co? I, I certainly have plans. Um, first of all, I uh, intend to, to make a few videos, I think two or three, uh, with songs we have recorded uh, one or two years ago. Uh, that's the first thing I want to do. Second, I still have inspiration for writing songs. Uh, I'm sure this year I will write a few songs. Well, it's, it's a matter of fighting against age or aging. I mean, my voice, uh, my pitch was much higher than it is now. I mean, Jagger is the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> so you are in a good company. For example, in Snake Valley and also uh, in Motorcycle Blues, your voice is still uh, fit for those songs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, although, and maybe it's, because it's, it's, it's lower. And, it's uh, more, but that, these songs are more storytelling than yeah. singing. 